So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's do better underscore fitness. And that's for my work one. And our car one is watch underscore German underscore cars. Okay, please enjoy the video. So welcome to my video. Today we will be talking about the charging curve on your EQA. And I'm also going to explain to you how the curve works and how you get the most energy and how you can get the most charge out of your vehicle. And I'm also going to show you how to get improve your range. All right, let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about the WLTP range in the minimum trim. So it's saying that you should be able to get 348 miles. In a maximum trim model, you're only gonna get 309. In perfect conditions, in range mode, so that means at 120 kilometers an hour, which is 55.62 miles per hour, so let's just say 56 miles per hour, you're only gonna be able to get 199 miles. And then the WLTP in the base trim model with the heating on. So mind you, all the rest of these with no heating or climate control or anything, not even vent speed on. So with the vent speed on it, they're saying you're going to be able to get 259 miles. And if you have a top trim model, then you're only going to be able to get 237 miles. And believe you, to even get the WLTP range, honestly, is quite difficult. And if you watch our other videos, you'll see that a lot of time we don't get that. So here's the graph of the charging curve. As you can see, it doesn't really go over 102 as is max kilowatts an hour, which is okay. If that if you're charging mostly at home, this car is going to be fine. Uh, if you do a lot of traveling, I would suggest getting something that charges a little faster. Now let's talk about at what percentage you get what. I will go through all of it for you. So from zero all the way to three, you're only going to be able to get 25 kilowatts. So I would suggest that you don't get that low. So most chargers that are about are at least 50 kilowatts and mostly what we look for is 100 or more so I would say don't get so low in the pack once you get to 4% you're at 95 kilowatts and you're gonna hold that until you get to 10 and then it's just gonna climb from there and it's gonna see a peak at 37% where it hits 101 then it's gonna tail down to 99 but then it goes back up which is kind of weird so 38 39 drops off a little bit and then it goes back up to 102 kilowatts at 40 and that is the highest you're ever gonna see and then from there on it's just gonna slowly drop it does stay to 100 and to 49% then it's gonna drop down to 97 at 50% and then we are gonna go below 90 at 56 percent and from then on it's just going to tailor down i personally would say just charge until you get to about 69 70 percent because after that you're going to be below 70 kilowatts when you get close to 96 it's to only at 45 and then when you get to 100 percent, it's only doing 33 percent 33 kilowatts which is pretty low okay now let's talk about their idea of perfect charge time. So 0 to 100 will take you 1 hour and 4 minutes. 10% to 100% will take you 55 minutes. 10 to 80%, which is what most companies recommend, is 36 minutes. So that's not too bad. So here's the WLTP. You can get 348 miles in the basic trim. Don't forget this is no climate control and this is in perfect condition, so they're probably doing 50 miles per hour, honestly. In the top model, you're going to see 309, same conditions, no AC, no air conditioning, no vent speed whatsoever, and they're getting 4.4 in that one and 4.9 if they got the minimum spec. So here's the results if you add air conditioning or climate control whatsoever. The 348 drops down to 259, that's a huge reduction just because you're using climate control. And you can see with the top model, you're only going to be able to get 237 miles. Okay, let's talk about real world estimates now. So this is what's most important for everybody. So if you're gonna be able to do perfect conditions at 56 miles per hour, no higher, you can get 274 miles max. So if you turned on climate control, heating, air conditioning, or just vent speed, that's gonna drop down to 240 miles. And if you were gonna use the motorway and actually get up to speed, so 75 in perfect conditions, you're gonna max out at 199. And if you use climate control, that's going to be 185. For us, our average total with mixed driving, so motorway speeds up to 70 and then some side streets, we're only getting about 165 with a climate control on. This is slower than our EQC, so I'm having to use a lot more throttle, and that's probably the reason. But at least that gives you a good idea what you should be able to expect. Thank you for watching, and if it helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you two have a question, let me know, and I really will do my best to make you a video. See you guys next Wednesday. Bye!